And now, my dear friends, for the commentary. You know, bringing up children nowadays is not an easy job. It could be problematical. And the reason is because the world has changed from years ago. It's a different world. The unshowing are different. The goals are different. The values are different. The priorities are different. And the whole pace of life and the world itself is so different. And we people have become a lot different than our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents have been. Some say it's for the better, some say it's for the worse. But I want to talk to you today about another situation in which we are all involved very deeply. And that is our children. And in order to bring up children properly nowadays, you have to have, first of all, the blessings of Almighty God to watch over you, that He have His good angels be with you all the time. And then again, to have the kind of kids who want to listen, and who want to uh, really, really take what you give them. And besides everything else, that we should be the kind of model parents for children that they should have someone that they could look up to, someone that they could respect, someone that they could honor, and someone that they could feel uh, great about. And in order for us to be able to set this kind of a high standard for ourselves, we have to really look around and see what it's all about. What are we doing? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? And you can't just live for the today. You have to think about the tomorrow. And we take a look at what's happened to the world today with drugs, and alcoholism, and AIDS, and sex, and teenage pregnancies, and all these different heartaches that come to families, and uh, the intermarriages, and uh, the cults. You must understand, dear friends, that many, many of us have holes in our heart because of what has uh, befallen us. We don't know how to handle it, and there aren't too many leaders around today, much to my chagrin, who know how to handle it. Worse than that, not everybody wants to get involved, who wants to be plagued with these kind of problems. And so you uh, sort of shy away from them, and you try to look for the easy way out. But in essence, we must understand that unless we bring up a generation that's going to have values and a way of life that is respectable, and a way of life that uh, we could really be proud of, we are just, God forbid, going to end it all in a big and a sorrowful way. God forbid we'll go down in ignominy. And this is something that we certainly don't want. Our parents sacrificed their lives for us. Our grandparents gave their lives for us. For what? Because they wanted to have a little bit nachis. They wanted to see an extension of their lives to continue onward. And they didn't want it all to end. You know, there's a different, in, in Yiddish there is a word, Stauben or the Obstauben. We know that there comes a time when you have to die. That's called Stab. But then when you say Obstauben means cut off entirely. It, and everything ends there. Nobody wants it to end. Moses didn't want it to end. And nobody else wants it to end. We all would like that uh, after we are gone from here, may we all live and be well till 120 years at least, after we are gone, there should be someone to carry on and someone to take over. But in order for this to be part of life itself, we have to make an investment. You know, no deposit, no return. If you don't make a deposit, you're never going to be able to withdraw anything. And in order for us to be able to accomplish this, we have to uh, bring some sacrifices. It's not always the way we want it. It's not always as easy as it would, we would like it to be. There are times when we have to pay somewhat of a price for it. But the main thing that I want to talk to you about is that you have to watch your children. My dear friends, you have to know today the world is such that if we don't watch our children and if we don't have a hold over them, somebody else is going to get a hold over them. You'll find that these cultists are out there. They're working day and night investing huge sums of money, using every single tactic in the book, every single underhanded trick in order to be able to uh, you our children away from us. And uh, if a child has a weak moment, he could fall into that trap, and God forbid, uh, 
it becomes a serious problem. A problem that later will need deprogramming if you're lucky enough to be able to get someone to be able to deprogram the individual and to be able to uh, sort of get him out of this terrible uh, cult in which uh, the individual folds. And by the same token, if you don't watch your kids, you know that these drug pushers are all over the place. You know that uh, today uh, sex is rampant, and you know that uh, alcoholism is rampant. I mean, we hear things today that are mind-boggling, that make your hair stand on your head. And uh, you ask yourself the question, how could we control this? And you ask yourself, how could we put an end to this terrible epidemic? And how could we put an end to this terrible threat, which is called AIDS, which is uh, the worst death uh, signal that has ever been sent uh, to the world and to uh, the, the society. My dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, we better start uh, to wake up. It's later than you think. And don't expect somebody else to do it for you. It begins with ourselves first. We have to set the pace for the kids. We have to uh, see to live a life of moder modesty, a life of decency, a life of honesty, a life of integrity, a life of respectability, the kind of a life in which our children should be able to be proud and say, ah, what a wonderful set of parents and grandparents I have. It's such a pleasure to be in their company. They give me uh, so much to be proud of. But if we want uh, to sort of play the game just as they are, and if we want to... Uh, be buddy buddies with our kids and not play the role of a father or mother as many many think that that's the way to do it then I want you to know as they get older they take over and they start calling the shots and they start giving the orders you know today kids of six years old give the command to the mother and father and lo and behold just don't do what they want and you'll see the tantrum they're gonna go into and they'll get you crazy that you wouldn't know what hit you and so it's a very very important that when they're still young we give our children the kind of a training and I want to tell you that it's important to give them a religious training. They must know that there is an eye that sees and an ear that hears. You can't just them let them just run free and do whatever they want. God forbid a thousand times. That's where all the tsurus begin. That's where all the troubles start. You must set down a set of rules and regulations. Kids have to know what they're permitted to do and what they're not permitted to do. You know, it's the worst thing when a child never hears a no. Everything is yes. There is never thing that, there's nothing that is ever not given to him. Everything that he wants or she wants, it's delivered on a silver platter. We want to be good parents. We always use that the colloquial saying, Oh, I want to give my kids what I didn't have. But you know what I keep saying? Why don't you give your kids what you did have? And uh, if you will just share with them some of your experiences, and if you will just share with them some of those uh, wonderful values that you were given and taught, then it becomes a whole different ball game. And so it begins by giving your children a proper Jewish education. See to it that your children should be involved with the proper friends. Know where your children are at all times of day and night. Be sure that you know where they're going and with whom they are going. And today when kids run around with cars and kids have all this freedom and uh, they come home half drunk or half uh, knocked away with those drugs, God forbid, then you begin to say to yourself, oh, what did I do wrong? Where did I fail? How can I correct it? Don't wait until that happens, dear friends. D try your best to catch it, nip it in the bud, before, God forbid, it's too late. And I hope to God that you should never have the problem. But uh, look back, make a reevaluation of everything that's doing in your life, and see what do you have to do in order to correct and put the thing back the way it should be done.